all, my name is Lily and welcome to my channel. So last weekend I went to Dracon, Manchester based Harry Potter convention. So at this convention there are um, different magical stalls, it was supposed to look like Diagon Alley. Um, there are a few actors from the films, none of the main cast but some of the kind of more minor characters from the films and they do signings and panels and autographs and all that kind of thing. So, so I thought today I would show you a bit of footage from the convention and then give you kind of a wrap up of what I thought of the convention. So I thought I'd tell you the things that I liked about the event, the things that perhaps needed a bit of improvement and maybe give you a um, and then give you a short haul the things that I picked up at the event at the end. exact replica of my face, which I got to keep. Um, they were just like, do you want this? I was like, okay. I do. <laughs> just in like, yeah, <laughs> with all the lights dims, just sitting staring at me. I just, I, I just have it framed. No, I don't. It's in a, it's in a paper bag in, in the bottom of a cupboard somewhere. Um, it's, it's weird. It's a weird thing. I, I don't. Yes, exactly. Um, so yeah, that's for Georgina. In the half of print, you got cursed by the opal necklace and you got like flung into the air. How was that like filmed? So uh, it was all um, done with, uh, I've worked with the stunt team quite closely on, sorry, where, where were you? I can't see. Yeah, just there. Right. Um, well, yeah, well, I had to do a lot of work with the stunt team. Um, we filmed it in three different sections. So the first section was, Oh, when I very first touched the necklace and the whole scene happens with um, with uh, Izzy and Dan and Emma Rupert. Um, and they were so, so it was four sections, so we filmed the scene and then separately I filmed the bit on the floor and it was basically like a skateboard that I had to lay on. And they would pull it in different directions to make it look like I was flying across the floor. And then the bit in the air was filmed um, twice. I did it underwater, um, which is how my hair kind of has that really cool kind of floating effect. Um, and then we did it again with fans. So you get sort of variation of, of what my hair would do, what the costume would do to make it really eerie. And I think they sort of merged the two together. Um, and then, yeah, the fall from the fall back down to the ground, I thought it was going to be really technical. Um, and I walked onto the, the set and they said, oh, so the stunt lady's going to show you what happens to make you feel safe. And she was dangling, you know, the, the studios, the ceilings were huge. She sort of dangling by the ceiling. And I was like, great, so what happens? They're like, oh, we're just going to let go. And they let go of the rope. And <laughs> she fell, from, she fell. And I was like, oh, cool. Um, but no, yeah, did, and they were amazing. But, you know, they, they were, you know, the stunt team were just incredible. And so I just had a lot of fun doing that stuff and didn't feel scared or nervous. Um, so yeah, a lot of work went into what is like a very short, what, 20 seconds of the film, but it, it was hours worth of, of, of filming. So yeah, it was good fun. <laughs>
go. There we go. Brilliant, brilliant. So let's delve right the way back, um, back to the, um, the the time where uh, you were auditioning and you sort of got the call. What was that like for you on that first day when you realised? Um, so a bit of a funny story. My my mum was obviously the, the lady that took the call, um, and she thought it was her sister playing uh, a joke on her because she told her that I'd auditioned three times for it. Oh, I do apologise. Um, so it was a bit a bit surreal, but um, yeah, the moment that she actually realised that it was it was real, um, she brought me into the room and said, "Look, I've got some good news for you. Um, you probably want to sit down." And yeah, she told me I got the part, but I, I, being honest, I didn't realise how big it was. Okay. At the time, just because obviously I knew about Harry Potter, but I, I think the reality of it didn't hit me until after filming. Just how massive it would be. Yeah, yeah, and I, even, even to this day, I still don't quite realise how big it is. Do you think it's a big film? Yeah. Yeah. I'd say. No, no, it's, it's just, I think, the, the feeling knowing that you're, you're always going to be here, <laughs> even when you're gone, yeah. um, it's, it's quite surreal. Wow. Yeah. Well, I had auditioned for the role of Luna Lovegood the previous year. So I'd gone in and I'd met um, casting. And then the following year, they called me in for Pansy. And I'd had, I think it was two or three auditions, and then they brought me in uh, for a test with Tom. And we got on really well. And then what happened was I ended up going on holiday. It was my first trip away with my girlfriend. We went to Newquay for like five days. And I didn't have my phone on me. I left it and we were on the beach. And so I had all these calls from my mom and oh. my agent and all these people. And I totally missed it. And then four hours later, I listened to a voice sound and I found out that I got it. And I was very happy. Why did you find out in UK? I did find out in UK. Wow, Fistral Beach. Nice yeah. place to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, I originally auditioned for Dudley. Um, I think I may have had about four auditions, maybe, maybe possibly five, I can't remember, it's a lot of auditions. Um, I got down to like the last two, um, which wasn't Harry Melling, um, and but the producers, they decided they wanted a different look, they wanted to go like a, a kind of different direction with Dudley, and uh, obviously he didn't get a part, and I got called back three weeks later to try out Goyle, um, and they basically, we went, went into the room and Jamie Wade had already been cast as Crab and Tom had already been cast as Draco. So they just needed Goyle, you know, and they lined up a few of us up next to them, um, went out of the room, came back in the room and they said, uh, you need to do a job. They told me there and then. So you were told right there and then? Right there and then, yeah. Everybody, and a big round of applause for the amazing Mr. Chris Rankin. Yeah. Chris Ryan, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Hello. Okay, well I do stink a bit after running around today. I bet you do. Okay, so um, a bit like we did last year, let's, I like to start at the beginning. So let's say um, in 1983. Yeah, in 1983. Um, oh, windy night in November. Yeah, I remember it well. Um, well you were there at my birth? No. <laughs> I mean, I'm a doctor, so it's a tight. No, that would be weird. <laughs> It's a title possible, you never know. I'm, I'm You're not old enough to be my dad, Patsy, come on. <laughs> am I old enough? No, I'm not old enough to be your dad, definitely not, no. But I am older than you, definitely not, but uh, yeah. Anyway, so um, I just had a really easy paper. No, this is not when you came here to. This is not the talk that we're supposed to be having. Uh, did you, from the books, did you have a favourite character? Did you identify like, a favourite character from the books? Um, uh, I, I can't remember, really. I, I really liked Ginny in Chamber of Secrets. There's something, there's something about the way that Ginny was so kind of fierce and feisty, but still quite shy. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, she kind of, I think she stuck out as a character in that book too. I'm like, oh, 11 year old girl with an attitude. This is good, this is good writing. You don't normally see those. Um, I like that at all. Um, I always like, I like a strange character. Like, I like Filch a lot. I think Filch is a great <laughs> character. Um, and Colin Creedy as well in the second book was well. like there's like it's it's a little character where you go these are great little parts these are lovely little people I've got so bothered about yeah. I don't know the heroes because <laughs> they're heroes you know they're just heroes yeah but that's interesting that you were drawn to a Weasley first of all 
oh, I think it's a ginger thing, though, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> like, we don't get written about very much in literature, so. Only a ginger. Yes, quite. I'm not singing that. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Booker Tooth. Yeah, um, so. So then, what was next? Was it um, was it to go and get a costume, get the get the yeah, that lovely hat and stuff? Go for a pointy hat fizzing and a and a robe fizzing, and then and then I think I can't remember. It was so long ago now, but I think and it all was so blurry. But I think I had a costume fizzing, and we did the read through on the same day. I think, right. um, which was a lot, if I'm honest. Yeah, it was quite suddenly like you know, I, I, I say read through. Literally, you turn up having never been in a film before, or actually, to that point, never earned money before. This was my first paid job. I hadn't had a paper round or anything. Um, and you walk into a room, and in the room are all the famous actors you can think of <laughs> in one room. It's Robbie Coltrane, and there's Jake, well, Jake and Ryan's not an actor, but she's, you know, there's our Lord and, you know, we, we just, yeah, she, she, she controls us. Uh, uh, Maggie Smith and Richard Harris and Alan Rickman and Robbie Coltrane and Judy Bowman. Judy Rogers wasn't there at that time because she hadn't come quite yet, but Rick Mayall was there. We'll come more to that in a bit. Um, he was playing Peeves until they cut Peeves, um, and he would have been He was amazing. Um, I got to work on that bit with him, which is um, I don't want to talk about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we did all that, and suddenly I'm expected to be saying lines and like acting with all these really acty people. <laughs> Who have Oscars and stuff, and it was a lot. It was an awful lot. Yeah. But fortunately, all us kids had no clue what we were doing, and it was quite yeah. Yeah. Let's let's um, let's drill down into some of the famous names because I, I was like um, any excuse, bitch. Three hundred and ninety. Oh. Oh. Let's talk about Alan Rickman, yes. if we can, please. Raise our bonds for Alan Rickman. One of my all time favorite actors. Um, and one of the scariest human beings ever created. <laughs> yeah, so what was you, what was your first Rickman experience? Utter terror. It's, I think everybody's. <laughs> no, honestly, because I do talk about this quite a lot. Obviously, everybody wants to know what was Alan Rickman like, because everybody's mum fancies him, and everybody thinks he's the best band he ever created. Um, <laughs> both of which are true. Um, it was quite a long time before I think many of us, so I can only speak for myself, but I think probably quite a lot of us ever got to actually meet Alan Rickman because he would be in hair and makeup a lot earlier than we would. And so if ever you saw Alan Rickman at the studios, he was in full Snape outfit. I don't think it was years before I saw him outside of his wig and Long. So whenever you saw him, he was always swooping somewhere. <laughs> because when you got that wig and that light cloak and the way it was built and the costume, and because Alan is a consummate, was, was, uh, was a consummate method, like it's, you got method, you got snake wherever you went. So you'd see him walking down the corridors and he would be billowing, basically. <laughs> So you're always a little bit scared of that. And then also when we were filming on the Great Hall set, which is the most of the time that I saw it, because I was obviously never in the, because Percy was older, we never saw Percy's classes. I never got to the classroom stuff with him, but I'd see him in the Great Hall stuff. Now when we were filming the Great Hall stuff, who's been to the studio tour? Yeah, so you know whether, like you, wow. Yeah, I know. Um, like in the pillars, in the wood panelling around the Great Hall, we had these like escape hatches that we used to get out because there was a lot of kids, so you had to kind of clear the hall from both sides rather than everyone through the big door at the end. And then off to either side of the Great Hall, we had little sort of rest zones, I guess, where our chairs were, and there's tea and biscuits, all that kind of stuff. But around the Great Hall was all black cloth. So if you imagine basically putting the Great Hall in the middle of this, it looked like this was a big black box so they could control the light situation. For the filming purposes, obviously. But of course, we'd all be stood around, we wouldn't be sat around there having our tea and biscuits. And Alan Rickman, who was quite tall but also had a black wig and a black coat <laughs> all the way down to the floor. And you, quite often you'd be talking away, and all of a sudden, this sort of 
snake would emerge out of the tongues behind you. <laughs> and dear God, that is a terrifying crossbow when you suddenly realise that there's Alan Rickman's here. Um, yeah, terrifying. Um, but the first time I met him properly was he was doing a play in the West End. He was doing Private Lives, an old coward comedy play in the West End. And I went, I took my mum and one of my mum's friends to see him because, you know, like I said, mum love Alan Rickman. Um, and sort of plucked up the courage at the end of the play to go up to the stage door and say, I'm in Harry Potter and I'm in Harry Potter and I can't let him say hello to Alan Rickman, that's okay. And they're like, yeah, go on, go on, go on down. So we went down and knocked on the great thing. Obviously, somebody had run down and went, some kid here from Harry Potter. Um, and he was delightful. We, uh, bearing in mind, this was a Saturday, he'd done two shows. We sat in his dressing room with him um, and he asked me questions. He talked about me and he wanted to know all about why I liked acting and what I wanted to do with acting. And, was, and all, was, all he was interested in was helping. But we were there for probably about an hour and a half after the man had been on stage all day. And like, I mean, there was wine and there was champagne and the, my mum and her friend were very happy because he was in a little dressing room. <laughs> 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 um, but he, yeah, Sexy he's thing. genuinely the kindest, sweetest man. But obviously because you never really saw that. You always saw the Sheriff of Nottingham or Hans Gruber or Snape. Um, yeah, kind of terrifying at the same time, but really genuinely lovely. Okay, so let's start with the positives. The panel by Chris Rankin was incredible. He was hilarious and he had some great knowledge about Harry Potter. Uh, you can tell that he's really read the books, he's watched the films, he had some great stories from the set and from his time on the set. Um, also things about uh, things that he filmed for Percy Weasley and they didn't end up getting included in the films, things that were originally filmed with Peeves, um, the poltergeist, who was originally cast as Rick Mayo, and then didn't end up being included in the films. So yeah, you can just tell he's just a really lovely, genuine person who really does care about the world, the Harry Potter world, and also about the fans as well, which is just great to see. There were also some really good vendors there. Um, a lot of independent artists who do some amazing um, original Harry Potter replicas or things that you'd like to see from the films. I did pick up a couple of things, so I will show you them at the end. Now I went to Dracon last year um, in October and last year it was at uh, somewhere called Victoria Warehouse in Manchester. Last year we just had standard passes, so just your kind of um, kind of something to get into the event. There wasn't any kind of extras included because it was the first year ago and we didn't really know what it was about, what to expect. Last year, where for a standard pass, you weren't able to sit down at the panels, you had to wait in really long lines for things, and that was fine because you had standard pass. So, this year we got VIP passes. So we'd be able to sit down for the panels, we could queue jump for autographs and, and meet and greets and things like that, and it, it would just make the weekend more enjoyable, so we did pay more to get the VIP passes. However, unfortunately this year the VIP passes were a complete waste of money. And a lot of people complained on Dracon's social media, um, like their Facebook and their Twitter, that it really wasn't good quality. Saying here that the whole event is a waste of money, I'm just saying that getting the VIP passes this time was a waste of money. Um, it was, at, because it was at a bigger venue, because it was at the print works, it meant that the general public had access, so even if you didn't have a ticket, you could still get in and see all the vendors, you could still shop at all the stalls. Um, the only thing that you couldn't do was go into the panels, so everything else was open to the general public. There were a couple of places you could queue jump lines, but often the VIP lines ended up being longer than the kind of standard lines, so there was no point in standing in them, but then people who had the VIP lines were made to stand in the VIP lines, even though they were longer. Now another point is the panels. So, like I said, Chris Rankin's panel was incredible, it was amazing. Um, really, really funny. Uh, I think that I gave a good sense of that in what I filmed and what you've seen. However, the other panels were so disappointing. Now, I have nothing against these actors as people. I met um, Louis Cordice, I think that's how you say his name. Um, he plays Blaise the Beanie. I met him 
last year at DraceCon, um, I got his autograph and he was so lovely. He's such a lovely guy. Um, he really makes time for everyone who comes up and sees him. Really happy to have a chat with you. Um, absolutely nothing against him. They all seemed really, really lovely. Really happy to talk to you. However, apart from Chris Rankin, none of the actors seemed to actually know anything about Harry Potter. And I understand that they're, they're minor characters. You know, you had um, the actress who played Ariana Dumbledore. Um, you had the actress who played Pansy Parkinson and um, things like that but you're being hired to work at a Harry Potter event where you know you're going to have to do a panel where you're going to be asked questions by people who are massive Harry Potter fans and all their answers were I, I don't know I don't remember that from the books I don't remember that from the films it's been so long you know I'd at least think that you'd re-watch some of the films before going kind of like Wikipedia the main plot points or something because you know, it, it was kind of basic questions like what was your favourite scene to film? What kind what would you buy from Weasley's Wizard Weezes? I don't know any products from Weasley's Wizard Weezes. Like, really? You don't you don't know a single product from that entire set? No? Okay. Um it was just really bizarre that they just didn't really didn't seem to know anything. Um you know, and there were very specific questions about their characters that they just kind of seemed to not know about and not really give much thought to, which I thought was, yeah, it was kind of disappointing and bizarre. Um, and I expected more from it. So the final point leads back to the venue. So obviously, like I said, the venue was at the Printworks Manchester. Now there is a cinema in there, there are bars and restaurants in there. And that means that they couldn't close all that down just for this event. So it was open to everybody in the whole general public. Uh, so this meant that it was really, really overcrowded. Um, and for someone with anxiety, being completely squished between people, not being able to get close to actually anything that I paid to see, that was really overwhelming for me. I really, really didn't like it. Sunday was a lot better. It was a lot quieter. But Saturday was just, I just didn't want to be there. I just wanted to leave because there were just too many people and I couldn't handle it. Also, it kind of ruined the magical vibes of it. Last year when it was at Victoria Warehouse, you had to have a ticket to get in. Sorry if the lighting changed a bit. I had a phone call from a nana and so I had to answer that and then I was on the phone to her for like 45 minutes. So if the lights changed, that's why I was talking to my nana. Anyway, um, I think I was talking about the venue and the fact that it was really overcrowded and it just made me really anxious. And so yeah, the venue was a lot better last year than it is. That it was this year. So finally let's have a look see at what I ended up picking up from the um, stores. So all the things that I got were birthday presents, my birthday next week but I wanted stuff from like Harry Potter related things because a bit of a Harry Potter fan. Um, so I'll just run through those things quickly. Um, also I'm not entirely sure who the vendors were for a lot of these things like they didn't include a lot of business cards I have the business cards for one thing and I, so I'll link their information down below um, but I don't have the information for the other things that I picked up so the first things that I got were these little art prints so these are by Orange Fruitcake Arts and Crafts so this is the first one it is a little niffler the second one by the same artist is this bottle of Felix Felicis, which I thought was really, really beautiful. I'm going to end up framing these. And the third one is the Ockamy in a teapot. Look how cute it is. So cute. Okay, so the next things I got was from a store that I really, really wanted to be there and they were, they were only there on the Sunday um, so I thought they weren't going to be there and they make the cutest things so one of this it is a little teeny tiny Harry Potter book, it's not in focus I don't know how to make it more in focus but it's so cute and it's on a little necklace I have one of these from um, the Prisoner of Azkaban which I got last time, it's on a keychain the next things I got from the same artist, this one I got last year and this are 
These are Mr. Weasley's Muggle Guys. This was the one I got last time. It's volume one, the rubber duck. Um, and so inside it kind of gives you kind of a wizard's perspective, Mr. Weasley's perspective on what these different things are and what they're kind of used for. Um, and then he's done a whole series of them. So like I said, last year I got the rubber duck. But then this year I got volume two, the football. I got volume three, the pen. And volume four, bubble wrap. This one's my favorite because it says, however, Having gone to the trouble of creating this protection, the muggles take great pleasure in destroying it. Whenever they encounter bubble wrap, they go into a trance-like state and pop the bubbles. They are often seen smiling and giggling as if enchanted. Which I thought was quite amusing. So yeah, apparently there is also the internet, the mobile phone, the car and the thermos. But they didn't have those there, they only had these four. So now I have the set of those. And the last thing I got is this vase. This is absolutely beautiful. So I don't know how well you can kind of see this, but it's gorgeous. So it has like the kind of the dark marked skull. Um, then what else can we see? You've got the sorting hat, Hogwarts Express, got a little Badger of a Hufflepuff, Rain of Ravenclaw's Diadem, Horcrux Ring, Golden Snitch, Mandrake, Unicorn Owl, Quidditch Pitch, Potion Bottles, Time Turner. It's just, it's beautiful, it's gorgeous. Again, I didn't get any kind of a business card with this, so I don't know who the seller was. Um, but it's gorgeous. This, cut, this was the most expensive thing that I got. Like I said, it was a gift for my birthday. Um, and this was £45. But I mean, this is, you know, this is kind of hand made. This was done by hand. So you can see why it cost as much as it did. So overall, would I recommend Raycon? Yes, absolutely. I would recommend Raycon. Um, what I wouldn't recommend though is getting a VIP pass and I wouldn't recommend going for both days. I think if you are someone like me who perhaps does get a bit nervous and anxious in crowds, I would say perhaps only go for the Sunday. It tended, it was a lot less busy than Saturday. I also didn't think there was enough to do for both days and there were also better vendors there on Sunday, both last year and this year. So that's just my personal opinion. Um, also, if the event was not the same location in the future, if it was at the print works again next year, then I would say that if you just wanted to look at the stalls and you didn't actually want to go to the panels or the signings or anything like that, then you could just walk in and have a look at the stalls without getting a ticket. Um, which is great for people who just want to go and look at the stalls. It's not so great for people who didn't get a ticket, but there we go. So that's it. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please do consider leaving a comment down below. Let me know anything magical that you've been getting up to lately. And apart from that, I will just see you next time. Bye.